E G G Egregious Games. When Midnight Suns was announced, there were reactions, and it was unsurprising. Most people, most of the day, get a handful of hours to pursue their hobbies. If they take a risk on a new thing, and it's bad, that's their whole weekend spent, and possibly their whole entertainment budget. So it's better to stick with what you know, or something very close to it. No surprises. You could pick that weird Cronenberg film, or a Marvel flick. Action, jokes, romance, home in time for dinner. Of course, I'm talking about the rise of the blockbuster formula in films, but this is just as true in the video game industry. A lot of people were angry that Midnight Suns wasn't XCOM with Marvel skins, or Ultimate Alliance, or something very familiar. But I'm glad it's not just an XCOM reskin. Midnight Suns is unique, bizarre, crooked, and wonderful. Stick around, and let's talk about the weird, wonky Marvel that is Midnight Suns. Okay, so if you know nothing about the game, what is it? Well, it's a game of two halves. In the first half, you chat with your teammates, train with them, and prepare for missions. You're given free reign to explore the Abbey Grounds, a supernatural forest filled with collectibles, challenges, and side missions. Once you're ready, you can deploy on missions, which reward you with loot and allow you to progress the story. And then when you're home, you'll be able to hang out with your teammates, spend that loot on improving the Abbey, and improve your heroes to prepare for the next combat mission. Game designers have long been aware that a bit of back and forth makes for interesting gameplay. Reseetir, for instance, has a similar daily loop where you run a shop and then socialize, occasionally dipping into dungeons to collect loot. XCOM has its strategy layer and its tactical layer. Even games that are relatively homogenous in their gameplay, like an FPS, will vary up their levels to give players a break between intense sections and boss battles. So while Midnight Suns isn't the first game to adopt a back and forth gameplay loop, its particular combo of tactical card combat and social simulator is completely unique. It's not just a bunch of Dragon Age-esque conversations, you also have a bunch of gamified interactions like hangouts and club nights and character specific stories. While many of these activities feed back into the tactical side of the game, exploring the Abbey generally feels like its own reward. In the early part of the game, you'll only have a small part of the grounds to explore, but like a Metroidvania, you'll unlock new abilities that open up new paths, which lead to new side stories and missions. If you love spooky goth playgrounds, this might scratch a similar itch as Hogwarts Legacy. It's nowhere near as fleshed out as a true open world game, but I was surprised just how much there is to do here. Combat. I've never played any combat quite like Midnight Suns, and it took me a while to really understand the design decisions underpinning it. It's fascinating. I think the closest comparison would be Into the Breach, whose microcosmic brilliance I could make a whole video on. See, Into the Breach doesn't leave anything uncertain, no dice rolls, no percentages. You can see what the enemy are about to do. At first, Into the Breach is a puzzle of optimization. You figure out your abilities, puzzle out a way to kill two enemies with one attack so you can handle the waves, but it's also a game of strategic trade-offs. What's more important, my mech or that building full of innocents? The immediate versus the long term. Morals versus pragmatism. Midnight Suns is similar. You don't know exactly what every enemy will do on their turn, but you usually have a good idea. You can see which enemies will attack which heroes most of the time, which ones are going for the objective, and those which don't have a marker, well, you know they're going to do some weird shit like punch a clone out of themselves or summon an altar that will buff every enemy on the map and ruin your day. Every mission in Midnight Suns starts like this. Oh, what the fuck? How am I supposed to kill all those? And then you look at your hand and say, Jesus Christ, what the fuck am I supposed to do with these? And then you sit down and have a think. You've only got three card plays on paper, but you've got more options than it first seems. Quick cards refund a card play if you use them to KO at least one enemy. That means you can play four, five, or even six cards if you're smart and lucky. Environmental interactions are another resource, along with hero points and card redraws. 
Maybe I can't play a hero ability, but that explosive barrel doesn't cost a card play. Before you know it, you've cleared half the board, and the enemies are looking a lot less intimidating. Your limited options force you to get creative with what you have. Just like Into the Breach, Midnight Suns is a game of clever optimization, and a game of trade-offs. I could play this card, which will give me hero points, and an extra card to play next turn. But I've only got one card play left, and Venom is about to send Spider-Man into the fucking Shadow Realm. What's more important? While the consequences of failing a mission in Midnight Suns are nowhere near as soul-crushing as XCOM, that does mean you're free to dial the difficulty up as high as you want and have fun with some truly tricky challenges. Did I mention there are eight difficulties? Yeah. Everyone wins with granular difficulty settings. Tailor the game to your preferences. Unfortunately, there's no option to make injuries more punishing. As it stands, injured heroes heal up in a few days, tops, and you can even send an injured hero back out into combat with only minor penalties. Damn it, Jake, I want you to hurt me. I'm not saying we should get a graphic cutscene of Wolverine getting his torso bisected, but... No, actually, no, I do want that. As the game progresses, you'll encounter many new enemies that you'll need to change up your strategy for. I won't go into every detail, but suffice to say, there are plenty of clever mechanics here that provide new problems to solve and new decisions to make. GAME DESIGN Let's stop for a moment and talk about game design. On this channel, I've talked a lot about games discourse, and how bad it is, like how journos and AAA devs reacted to Elden Ring's supposed UX problems. I believe when we're reviewing a game, it's important to understand the designer's intentions. Who is this game for? What feeling? is it's trying to capture. Midnight Suns is a game about superheroes and comic book action. First and foremost, it wants the players to feel powerful. So unlike XCOM, you're not, you know, counting out little squares of movement. No, these are superheroes. When you take a move action, you just pick a location, any location, on the map, and you go. Captain America isn't going to miss that 90% shot or duck behind cover, it just it wouldn't feel right. That's why Firax has decided to use cards. Without some element of unpredictability, tactical puzzles lack replay value. It's also why we have enemy waves and minions. These unpredictable elements mix up the player's strategy and give them an opportunity to feel heroic. Almost every turn in Midnight Suns, you're going to be knocking out multiple foes. Sometimes you can get a half dozen enemies with a single card. Now that feels awesome. A lot of people have complained about the small size of the maps, and this is one of those things that seems agreeable enough. Sure, why not have big maps? I want the hero to go boom around big epic map. But big maps are not always a good thing in games. Take it from Sid Meier, co-founder of Firaxis. Near the end of development of the original Civilization, the game was in good shape, but the maps were huge. In a GameDeveloper.com interview, he said, I remember slogging across this continent when I was playing, and I had my tanks against the lame-o units of the other guy, capturing city after city, and I thought, this map is just too big. His takeaway was, you can have the same amount of fun in half the space. In other words, bigger is not always better. Double the size of the map and you halve the enemy density, the chance they'll be within range of any given environmental interaction. Suddenly you're killing three enemies with a single attack instead of six. Sure, you could double the number of enemies, maybe halve their damage, increase the size of the player AoEs, add more environmental objects, but all of these would add complexity. The game becomes more difficult to balance. The player has to hold more things in their head. That means turn times get longer, missions get longer, and brain fatigue sets in faster. In a game like this, pacing is crucial. You want missions to be short so you can get back to the abbey. There, the player can unwind with some cheesy conversations. They can open some boxes and recharge their brain while exploring the abbey grounds. Then, when they're itching for a challenge again, the mission table is waiting. Like the tempo of any good story, the tension waxes and wanes. Story? Um, so, um, on the, uh, on the topic of story, uh, how to put this? Listen, 
I knew what I was getting into. This is a Marvel game. I'm not expecting Scott Lynch level dialogue, but fuck me. You know in the Avengers where Tony Stark and Captain America have a kind of rivalry? Not because they have any like real ideological differences, but just because they need some kind of drama for the story and so they can come together at the end as a team. Um, well, imagine that, but dragged out for 40 fucking hours. And I'm not joking when I say this. The dialogue is like a parody of Joss Whedon dialogue. It's like what you would get if you fed the MCU scripts into an AI generator and said, make more of this. I mean, I mean, it's not all bad. Okay. Like comic books themselves, the characters will occasionally, briefly flirt with nuance before reverting back to one-dimensional joke engines. There are parts that I really enjoyed, jokes that actually land, but maybe the bar was just set so low from earlier parts of the story that I got Stockholm Syndrome by the end. I did actually like the protagonist. They're not a blank slate, more of a shepherd, and that's fine with me. The fish-out-of-water backstory is charming, even if the explanation for their understanding of the modern day is an absolute ass-pull that is ignored for jokes when convenient. That's Marvel continuity for you! The morality system actually distinguishes between light, dark, and grey, which is a nice change from Mass Effect's pick-one-and-stick-with-it-or-get-fucked system. Characters around the Abbey will often ask you questions that will give you light or dark points, and some relevant reward like an item, friendship points, or stat boosts. It's fun, like taking one of those dumb online quizzes to find out what kind of anime character you are. I'm the kind that fucks dogs. Criticisms. Listen, this game isn't perfect. Fire Axis has a serious problem with getting information to the player. They're cold. Tool tips, you fuck. Like, the game never actually explains the basic fundamentals of the card system. You have to guess everything. Like, I can infer that you draw back up to six cards each turn, but the game never tells you. I was left wondering if it's draw two cards each turn until no, I figured it out for myself. But this is an inscription, man. Tell me the fucking mechanics. I assume that the game uses a standard discard pile and draw pile system. Or maybe discarded cards go right back onto the bottom of the deck. I wouldn't fucking know, and I've looked pretty fucking hard for a tutorial. Unlike Slay the Spire, which had a single full-time programmer, in Midnight Suns I can't see my draw pile or my discard pile. I just have to try and remember what I've put into my deck, what I've played and discarded, and what my character's stat page looks like. That's right, you can't view any of this information in battle, the only time it matters. So just like with Civ 6, Fire Axis has created a game that rewards numerical precision, but doesn't explain or present any of the numbers. It's up to dedicated fans to figure that shit out over the next few months or years and put it on seven different guides scattered across the internet like the fucking Dragon Balls. There are numerous other small technical and UI issues. For example, compliments are a hilarious spendable resource, but I can't see how many I have. Anywhere. I know that I have some because the compliments button is there, but is it one? Twenty? How many, Jake? How many compliments do I have? And the deck building UI is a nightmare. Why in God's name can't I sort the cards? They're not sorted alphabetically, by rarity, or anything. Three identical cards should not be in three different locations in my collection. And deck loadouts? Nope, non-existent. If you want to toss together a new experimental deck for a single mission, you'll have to manually revert it afterwards. With no card sorting. For a game that is all about cards, this is pretty fucking abysmal. And it wouldn't be a Fire Axis game without bad performance. This game has not just crashed on me, it's shut my PC down, multiple times. Many players have had saves lost, and the Deadpool DLC drop forced many, including myself, to get stuck in an infinite downloading loop that forced me to uninstall and reinstall the game from scratch. But it speaks to the game's appeal that I stayed up until 2am to finish the download and play a little before bed. This happened again with the Venom drop. 
Unfortunately, if the past is any indication, it's doubtful that Fire Axis will take time out of their DLC release schedule for quality of life and optimization. And that's a damn shame. Final Thoughts Midnight Suns is one of the weirdest AAA games I've played in a while. It's a game where you can level up your heroes by petting cats. It's a game where you can shoot the shit with Blade before taking Doctor Strange on a date to talk about philosophy. It's a game that combines the tactical map of XCOM with the card play and deck building of Slay the Spire. It's like many games that have existed before, and at the same time it's like nothing else that's ever been made. It's wonky and imperfect, but I kinda love it. I love that Fire Axis is letting its creatives do their thing instead of following formulas. In this day and age, the easy money is in sequels, remakes, and other creatively brain-dead endeavors. So I have to applaud Fire Axis for letting their creatives be creative. While games like this and XCOM Chimera Squad might not be flawless diamonds, they're more than games. They're a contribution to the ongoing conversation of game design. They're something we can talk about, something we can analyze and learn from. They challenge you, the audience, to try something new, to think in ways you haven't thought before. It's just a shame that Fire Axis themselves, while eager to try new things, seem unable to learn from their past mistakes. If you're making a strategy game, the depth of its mechanics only matter to the extent that the players can understand and leverage those mechanics. This game isn't worth missing out on because of its lackluster quality of life, but it does strike me as heinous that Fire Axis is charging $60 to $100 for a game that lacks card sorting. Once again, indie devs manage what AAA don't. But if you're in the market for the specific brand of weird, you won't find it anywhere else. Marvel's Midnight Suns is a truly unique flavor. Uh, if you've watched this video all the way through, thank you. Uh, my name's Egregious, I make games, I talk about games, this is my friend Dende. Um, and if you do either of those things, I would love to have you on Discord, where we do those things and I post more pictures of this little bastard. Um, sorry it's been so long, but you know, life, I've been very, very busy. Uh, working on a few things that I can't share yet. Uh, and moving house soon. So there's that. Um, anyway, if you have any thoughts on this video or about Midnight Suns, if you played Midnight Suns, I would love to have a, a discussion down in the comments. So do feel free to leave your comments below. And I, I always reply to them. You know, if, if they're good comments, if they're <laughs> worth replying to, I will always have a discussion. There. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you again for watching the video and just have yourself a great rest of your day. I'm the kind that fucks dogs. <laughs>